Great. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's great to see you all here in Oakland, California. Um, my name is Joshua Sharpstein. I am uh, uh, the co-chair of the Roundtable of Population Health Improvement. Um, I am also the vice dean for public health practice and community engagement at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Um, it's my great pleasure to kick off today's very interesting meeting. I welcome the participants in today's workshop and those who are viewing the live webcast. Um, as a reminder to all, uh, the workshop is being webcast and recorded, and the videos, slide presentations, and other materials will be available on the meeting webpage within a few days. I'd like to really thank the California Endowment for hosting uh, the roundtable uh, for this meeting um, as they have in the past. Let me just uh, tell you a little bit about the roundtable. Since February 2013, the roundtable has been providing a trusted venue for leaders from the public and private sectors to meet and discuss the leverage points and opportunities arising from changes in the social and political environment for achieving better health for the population. The roundtable's vision is of a strong, healthy, and productive society that cultivates human capital and equal opportunity. The vision rests on the recognition that outcomes such as improved life expectancy, quality of life, and health for all are shaped by social, economic, environmental, genetic, behavioral, and healthcare factors, among others, and require robust national and community-based policies and resources to achieve it. As one of the major activities, the Roundtable holds workshops, like this one, to discuss issues of importance for improving the nation's health. Today's topic is school success, an opportunity for population health action, and it follows two workshops uh, that the Roundtable has already had and are available on the website, one called Exploring Opportunities for Collaboration Between Health and Education in 2015, and a 2017 uh, workshop on exploring early childhood care and education levers to improve population health. Information is in the meeting, meeting materials and online. Um, as is the case with all cross-sector conversations, we approach this topic with an awareness of the modest knowledge about the educational field that exists in the health area, but with optimism about what we view as promising opportunities to work together and learn from each other. Now. Um, I'm a pediatrician by training, and when I think about particularly school-age populations of children, it occurred to me uh, through seeing children that one of the easiest ways for me to figure out how a child is doing from a health perspective and how a population of children are doing from a health perspective is to understand how they're doing in school. It is so unbelievably reflective of their health and critical for their future and their future health. And uh, yet, in pediatric practice, I knew very little about how the kids that I took care of were doing in school. And there was a big divide between health and education, a divide that is starting to break down. And hopefully today we're going to take a big uh, whack at that barrier and really open up the conversation, particularly about what health can do and public health can do to improve educational outcomes. Now, everybody here has uh, what it looks like a bingo card. It's not exactly a bingo card. If you don't have one of these pieces of paper, raise your hand, um, and uh, we will get you one. Let me just explain what this is, and people watching online can follow at home, too, um, and, can, and can work on this. We were going to collect these at the end, because we want your edits, your thoughts. This is a tangible, concrete outcome, among others, from today's meeting. And this is really a concept of how health can deliver results for education across different um, health issues and across different mechanisms for delivering um, services. So, for example, we will be hearing about an in-school program that provides uh, glasses for children to help them uh, achieve more in, in reading and in school. And that gets you vision on the health axis and, and a direct in-school program on the, uh, the site of intervention axis. And you all may know of other ways to, our goal is to fill in this um, in as many ideas as we can, things that have happened, things that may not, we may not be talking about today, as well as other ideas that people may have. And so we will be 
putting this together and hopefully releasing a comprehensive look at all the ways that health can contribute to educational success after this meeting. Um, I would like to uh, thank the planning committee for all their work putting this together, and that includes Alex Biu, Mark Garevich, Robert Kahn, Robert Kaplan, Phyllis Meadows, Elena Rivera, and Heidi Schumacher. Um, Biosketches for them and the speakers are uh, in the electronic meeting materials and available on the website. I also want to particularly thank the staff of the roundtable, including uh, uh, um, Alina um, Basiu, um, Calva Alvarado, and Kimani Jones for their terrific work organizing uh, this event. Please uh, join me in thanking them. Um, I know the most important question on everyone's mind is, is there going to be a Twitter hashtag <laughs> for today? And I am here to tell you there are two Twitter hashtags, which you can use if you are tweeting one of them is the usual hashtag um, PopHealthRT, and the other one is a one called health for ed with health and the number for ed, because that's really our topic today. Um, I, at the end of the day, my fellow co-chair, Sani Magnin, a um, die-hard Oakland A's fan, is, um, is, is going to be making some uh, reflections on the day, and um, I'm uh, very much looking forward to, to hearing her wrap up. Um, but now I'd like to kick this off by introducing uh, a fantastic academic leader and thought leader on public health and education in this country, Steve Wolf. Uh, he is the Emeritus Director of the Center on Society and Health at Virginia Commonwealth University and Professor the Department of Family Medicine and Population Health. He's going to start with a foundational um, uh, talk on why educational success matters for health, a little bit beyond just my intuition in the clinic. Thank you so much, Professor Wolf. <laughs> 